Good morning. Good morning. It's a good morning to be here. Just like last week. You already know what I'm going to ask. Find somebody next to you or find someone. You know what? Stand to your feet. Everybody's like, no, really? No, we're doing it. Close your eyes. Ask the Holy Spirit, who am I going to pray with this morning? Open your eyes and just go to find one person and go pray with them. And this is the prayer that you're praying this morning. Lord, I ask that you allow this message to push my relationship with you forward. That's what you're praying. Find somebody. God, as we are finding our brothers and sisters in this room to pray with, Lord, this is what we ask. Let this message push our relationship with you forward. Let our vision be forward. Let our mindset be forward. Let the growth of our church move forward. And Lord, even as I'm praying and even as I'm declaring in this room, I feel your presence even heavier right now. God, that I know that this is the thing that you want the heart of your children to see, is that we can move forward, that you have given us freedom not to go backwards, but to go forward. And Lord, I ask right now in the powerful name, in your powerful name, let there be breakthrough in this place today so that we can see your revival take place. Lord, I thank you for everybody in this room. I thank you for the message that we're about to receive. Lord, I ask right now in this place, Lord, let all ears be open, let all hearts be open to hear, and let there not be a single distraction. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can find your seats. Good morning. What a good way to start our morning. What a good way to show one another that it does take boldness to pray for someone. And what I want to share with you guys this morning, I feel, is a message that maybe some of you guys have heard before, but it's a message that we all need a reminder of. But before we even get there, in the last few weeks, we've closed out that series and we were talking about the power to change and we were talking about the good habits and the bad habits and we were talking about the power to change our thoughts. We were talking about the power to change uh, just our, our ability to not just only try anymore, but begin to train with the gifts and talents that the Lord has given us. These are many of the messages that we've spoken about in the last month. And for those who might have not had the opportunity to hear all of them, I hope that you would go back to listen because because of those messages and because of the impact that it's had, I feel a shifting in our church already. And I don't know about you guys, and I don't know if you're sitting in this room and can tell a difference, but I feel a shifting in the room. And what do I mean by that? Well, maybe there's something that we've been doing over and over and over for the many years that we've been in our church, and nothing is wrong with that. But if we have yet to see a result in it, why not change it up? And one of my change-ups is this, is for many, many years, a lot of people have came to our church, and a lot of people have yet to pray for somebody sitting right next to them. Big churches, little churches, churches all over the world, churches in the United States, churches down the street. A lot of people are in a place where it's Perfectly fine to come to church and hear a good word and have a great time of worship, but leave. But what about understanding the gifts and talents that God has given us as individuals and also as a body of Christ and how we can encourage one another and how we can build our foundation here on God so that we can be ready to host his revival or his presence whenever he's ready. And in the moment that God says revival is going to happen in the church, will you as an individual be ready? Revival can't just happen based off of one person's prayer. Revival happens when all hearts are in the same direction, when all hearts are in the same place saying, I want to see that of God. You know, whenever people are asking me, like, Pastor Sam, what do you think when when people have been saying, like, revival is coming to church, revival is coming to church? And what I mean by this is not revival conference. What I'm talking about is true revival that is coming here to our church. And what do I mean by that? How many of you guys can say that you've been at church here and you've seen people get healed? I have. Before my own eyes, that's like the DNA of VBC. How many of you can say that you've seen people who have came here who have spiritual bondage and they were broken free? I have. I've seen it with my own eyes. How many of you guys have seen spiritual transformation in people's lives? I have. There are many of you guys who have that testimony. 
How many of you guys have seen friends and family members come to know the Lord and they didn't know what a true encounter with the Holy Spirit was like? I have. I've seen it before my own eyes. And the reason why it's so important for us to talk about this is because when true revival happens here in this place or in in any place, that's amplified by hundreds. And it's amplified by hundreds where when a true encounter happens, when people truly encounter God, lives are going to be changed radically and instantly. And being in the presence of God is going to feel so much different than what you're used to because everybody in one place, in one accord, not one heart is out of alignment, but everybody is in his presence. And that's a beautiful place to be. Why? You know, the miracles that I want to see, and I'm not saying that the miracles that I've seen so far aren't miracles. They are miracles. But I'm saying there are miracles in my life that I have yet to see that I want to see. I've heard stories of people having no limb, and a miracle happens right before them. I've heard stories, of, of, of course, of people who have had uh, the diagnosis of cancer, and cancer is gone. But I want to... I want to see the change in people's faces that I don't even know. I want to see people come to church. I want to see people who don't even know who our church is, who's never, who have never stepped foot in our church. But the moment they come here, they're like, whoa, something is different. I feel God. I don't feel like I'm stepping into a building or an organization. No, I feel God's presence. And you ask them, how did you know to come to our church They said, I don't know, I was just driving past the freeway and I just felt like something tell me to just come this direction. And the gravitational pull of God's presence or or, or just who he is is going to attract and draw all who are hungry. And my question this morning for you guys is, are you even hungry? Do you want to see revival and do you want to see it happen in your church here at VBC Houston and do you want to be a part of it? See, these questions and and, and the challenge that you face is this, is are you someone who is hosting the presence of God? Are you someone who can help usher in the presence of God? Or are you pushing it away? See, something that God's been changing in my life and shifting in my life and, and seeing a different picture for Our church is this, and and I promise you guys, that last series really changed the way that even I'm preaching and teaching and talking to people. And the reason why I I say that is because the impact that it's had on not only my life, but the life of many of you in the church, I've seen the, 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 the truth of it. I've seen those who really caught wind of it, and there has been change in their life. And for me personally, one of the things that I do want to um, preface, and I do want to say is this, is do I want to see revival? Yes, I do. But do I feel like everybody's hearts are in the same place to want to see revival? I think some people are like, yeah, maybe. Like, that would be cool. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about, do you crave and hunger to want more of God? And if your answer is yes, then what are you going to do about it? Are you going to try to, to tell more people about this hunger that you have, or are you going to keep it to yourself? See, when true revival happens, you're, you can't just, you, you won't be able to stop talking about God. When true revival happens, you won't be able to even leave, you know, the presence of God because it's going to be the best place that you've ever been. It's going to be the best encounter with God that you've ever had. I mean, truthfully, one thing that I do want to share with you guys is this, is I believe that it's coming to our church And there's been words of prophecy that have been spoken over our church years ago. But there's a word of prophecy that was spoken recently that talks about that revival is going to break out in Houston. And it wasn't from anybody here at our church that we knew. And it was from somebody completely different. And specific words to that prophecy was there was going to be a breakthrough and a revival that was going to happen in Houston. And it's going to stem from the Vietnamese is what it said. But for me, I take that as in VBC Houston. I take that as in the Vietnamese church who understands encountering God, who understands the spiritual gifts of God, who understands following after the Holy Spirit, who understands truthfully the power of Jesus who has conquered the grave, who is alive today. That's what I believe. 
I believe that we have seen many times where in our church, and I've said this to the, the student group, I've said we've hit a place where we're almost there, and we're almost there, and we're almost there of, of true breakthrough. And I shared with you guys last week, what it, or, or a couple weeks ago, what it was really like at the beach retreat for the students. And last week's message, I hope that it was impactful to your heart, is where are you planting your seeds? Where are your spiritual seeds being planted right now? Have you been planting your seeds in a place where the soil is ready for your your seeds that you're planting, your spiritual seeds that you're planting to grow? In the Bible, it talks about people who are a farmer who has planted seeds and and, and put out seeds, but it landed on, on the pathway. It landed like on the concrete, pretty much. It couldn't grow. It talked about someone who threw seeds, or this farmer who threw seeds out in another place, and and the the soil was so shallow that it could only grow for so much, and then the sun was able to just, you know, kill it off. And then it talked about another place where where you were able to throw out seeds and and it could grow, but then the thorns were were cutting it off. And Jesus was saying these things in in a parable, and the disciples were like, can you explain it to us? And when Jesus explains it to them, it makes sense to them talking about the word of God and and hearing the word of God and applying it to your life and where in your life are you applying it to and does your life look like the soil that that seed can grow in? And all of these messages leading up to today and all of these messages leading up to this revival that everybody's talking about has shown me that there's been a spiritual cleansing, a change, and now a place where we're about to reap the harvest. And for many of us, we've planted these seeds, the spiritual seeds, where you've been praying for a family member or you've been praying for something in particular, you've been praying for this or praying for that, and you've asked yourself, why, 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 why has it not happened yet? When is it going to happen, Lord? I've been praying for years. I still haven't seen my loved one here at church. My mom still isn't saved. My dad still isn't saved. My my spouse still isn't saved or my sibling or whatever it is. They're still like, Lord, I'm trusting in you. I'm planting these seeds. When is it going to flourish? When am I going to see And for many of us, and I said it last week, many of us are are, are acting like this where we go outside and we plant a seed for an apple tree. We go out the next day and say, where's my apple? But realistically, when you're asking yourself or when you're doing that, Lord, when is it going to happen? Lord, when is it going to happen? Lord, when is it going to happen? What many of us don't really understand or, or haven't seen yet is how much the process takes to see the seed actually grow into what it is. I remember at my mom and dad's old house, there was a, this plumello tree, and it was amazing. I mean, it was like that big yellow grapefruit, but on the inside, it was like sweet, and it wasn't sour at all, and it was like the size of your head. And I remember like years, I'm talking about probably 10 years or so, I remember, nothing. My mom was like, one day we're going to have so much fruit, it's going to be amazing. I was like, when's it going to happen? Nothing for a long time. And then the season that, and then, and then when the season came, years later, we started to see God just, we started to see how the creation of what God can do. Like, how beautiful it is, like, you go to a grocery store and you can pick as many fruit as you want. But to have a fruit tree in your backyard and just look like, wow, I can just go out here and just grab whatever I want. It's amazing to see that. It's amazing to experience that. And whenever I was able to see that, I was like, the process was so long. And then to, to apply it now at an older age with Scripture, man, I feel like so many times I've gone to God and I'm like, Lord, when are you going to make it happen? I just prayed that prayer yesterday, though. <laughs> when are you going to make this happen? And that was like two days ago. That was last Sunday. And we want God to work on our timeline, and it just shows that we have yet to yield ourselves to God's time. And we still want to be in control. Why is this all important? And and, and why is this even the beginning of my message? Is because today we start a new series. And it's it's three-part series. And it's about courageous prayers. Are you in a place in your spiritual life where you're praying courageous prayers? Or are you praying safe prayers? Ask yourself that, that honest question. Because maybe one of the bad habits that you changed was not speaking to your Heavenly Father. And maybe one of those things that you slowly have started to do was say a little bit more of a prayer. And think about it like this is, you've been in a relationship with God, but only one person's been talking. Or you've been in a relationship with God for so long, yet not a single word has been spoken. And see, the thing about it is, what do I mean by safe prayers? Because see, I truly believe that 
what we've learned in the New Testament and the empowerment, it really has a lot to do with us. We're going to be used to be a reflection of Christ. And we're going to be used to be the extension of Christ. But let's talk about safe prayers. Maybe some of your prayers sound like this. Is God, I, I pray that you help so-and-so. Nothing's wrong with it. Great prayer, but safe prayer. What about a, a courageous prayer like, Lord, I ask that you use me to go and help so-and-so. Lord, I ask that you give me the opportunity to show who you are in my life to so-and-so. A, a safe prayer would be, Lord, I, 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 um, I ask that you can heal this person. Safe prayer, because you know he can do it. Courageous prayer is, Lord, empower me. Let me be an extension of you. And when I lay my hands and declare in your powerful name that they will be healed. Courageous prayer. I believe that many of us, and in the message that I talked about, and it was awesome because last week I had a conversation with someone. They said, Pastor Sam, really explain to me trying and training. At first I thought that person was joking, but he was like, no, really explain to me. I really want to understand. I was like, okay. And I explained to him. They're like, oh, that makes sense. And many of us are in a place where we've been trying to do something, but instead of understanding the gift that we currently have, which is prayer, we haven't really been in a place of training in our gifting of prayer. And what, am I, what have I showed for the last two weeks is maybe stepping out in faith and praying for someone else, that's new to you. And, and, and I'm not saying that, that, you know, it's not a good thing. Maybe some of you, you, you can pray at home and you can be in your prayer closet and, 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 and for yourself. And that's great. And, and, and personally, I, I, feel no, I, I feel no problems with that at all, except one thing, though. But when are you going to be used by God? When are you going to use your life to be used by God? And I remember a story that, that my wife shared with me. And um, one day at work, she had just the boldness to pray for one of her, um, one of her coworkers. And she prayed for them and they were so moved by her prayer. And Jeannie was like, what, what do you mean? They're like, I don't really understand prayer like that. And when I pray, it's just for me and God, but I've never been in a place where I could understand what you just did for me and how you prayed for me. You know, sometimes people make prayers to be just kind of scripted, but to hear that freedom of how you just took my life and really just talked to God on behalf of me, and you used your life to bless me in that way, I've never seen prayer like that before. And that takes boldness, and that takes courage. But for many of us, are we in that place to see that portion of our life grow? See, the thing about courageous prayers, and, and this is something that I want to break down for you, is there's truly a difference between boldness and, and, and courage or, or, or being courageous. The, the two differences that I personally see, and, and, and I wrote it out so that I wouldn't butcher it or anything, that the word courageous is like the word boldness, but there's a difference. Boldness refers to the willingness to take risk and act boldly, often without considering the consequences. On the other hand, being courageous is the ability to face fear, danger, or uncertainty with confidence and bravery. And for me, like, the Pastor Sam's version of it is boldness is an action, and the other is the passion behind the action. And for me to give you an easier explanation as you think about a firefighter, yes, it takes boldness to step out and say, I'm going to go into that burning building. But the other portion of it is inside of their heart and that passion that they have to be courageous, to do something, to risk whatever it is for the good. And so anybody can have boldness to just do something recklessly and just be like, I'm just going to do it. But courage and, and being courageous comes from something within. It comes from the passion that you have within yourself. 
And so when we talk about courageous prayers, do you have that passion inside of you from God to be able to have the boldness then to step out? And something that, that just really wrecked the way that I saw this was, and, and we've read this scripture before and we've seen it, and, and it's when Peter and John are in Acts chapter 4, and, and we talked about it in, in, in Acts chapter 3, first off, you know the story because we talked about it and it was a game changer for a lot of us too, is at the beautiful gates, there was somebody who was crippled and somebody who's been sitting at the gate every single day, yet Peter and, and John go there and, and, and they see this man and this man looks at them and he's like, you got anything for me pretty much? You got money for me? And the response is one of the most beautiful things that we've seen and the response is something that many of us yet try to do is just, the response is, look, silver and gold I do not have. Like truthfully, and, and my, my version of it is, hey man, I don't have money, but I've got something even better for you. I've got something that's going to change your life forever. Maybe a few dollars is going to get you a sandwich, but introducing you to God and letting you really encounter him is going to change your life forever. And so he looks at him intently, he reaches his hand out to him, and he tells him to stand up and walk in the powerful name of Jesus. And for me personally, when I hear that story and when I think about it, one, he has the courage to do that, but two, he has the boldness to actually act upon it. And for me, it takes the two. You can't have one without the other, because what does that look like? I want us to look at the scripture and then I'll show you. Acts chapter 4, actually. In Acts chapter 4, verse 7, and I'll probably read just to about verse 11 for now. After the man was healed, the government, they weren't happy about it. So then they put them in jail, and then they put them before trial. And this is the conversation that's held and that's had is they brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and, and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man you crucified but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures where it says, the stone that, that, you, that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And then reading down a little bit more in verse 12, it says, there is salvation in no one else God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. And these, these are my favorite verses that follow. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could, not, since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. Let's just end there. Okay. Take, take the scriptures off the screen. And the reason why I, 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 said, I said that is because this is, you heard, did it impact your heart? You heard what someone did for God, and then you saw the boldness that they had to stand up before council before people who are going to put them in jail to say, what are we on trial for? Are we on trial for doing a good deed? Are we on trial for a man being healed? I'm if you want to know how he got healed, I'll tell you, though. How he got healed was the person that y'all rejected, the person that y'all put on the cross, this is how this man was healed. And they had nothing to say. Why? Because the man that was healed was right there. See, for me, when I read the scripture and when I, I understand the scripture, I read it, I acknowledge what happened, but then the question is, did it fire you up? On the inside of you, did you say, man, I wish I could do that? On the inside, when you heard that scripture, did you say, wow, I wish I had that boldness? Now, if you go back and you read it and you're like, no, I didn't catch it yet, Pastor Sam. I actually didn't understand really what was happening. Okay. So then if you read it a second time, ask yourself, I heard it, I understood it, but did a fire really be lit inside of you to say, I want to do that? See, now there's a difference between the two, and that's why I was telling you, courage and boldness are two totally different things. See, 
the reason why I say that is because my first point that I have for you is this, is are you lacking boldness? See, because the thing is, I believe that many of us have been in a place where we've, we have courageous prayers. Lord, use me. Use me to bless Titus. Use me to bless Jennifer. Use me to bless Peter. Use me to, to bless Joseph. Lord, use my life. I want to do it. I want to be able to bless them. Lord, empower me. Do these things. And, and Lord, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. God opens up the door of opportunity, and we're like, next time. And that's happened many times in my life, and I'm only preaching from a place of a testimony of, I used to be like that. I used to. I used to be in that place. And, and, and here's another testimony for you, is I spoke with somebody last week, and that person shared a testimony and said, Pastor Sam, I don't know why, but I've never done this before, but then it was crazy because at our job, we're able to, like, share a little bit to the new people or the new interns that come in. And for some reason, we passed out cards that day to share a little bit about whatever was on the card. And on that card, it said, what's your favorite book or what book are you reading right now? And in that moment, that person had a question of, of kind of reservation, should I share, should I not? And then they just said with boldness, I've been reading the Bible. Not caring what anybody else would think, not caring with what anybody else would say in the room, but with the boldness and the courage that they had, I'm reading the Bible. And I don't know if that person shared in that moment of what they read in the Bible, but it took courage, and then the action to act upon that courage was boldness, and they did it. Now see, little acts of your boldness leads to a place where you can live a bold life. See, doing things here once in a while, or doing things here a little bit more and more, it, it's, it, it, it helps, but to have a lifestyle of that is totally different. See, when I look at Peter and John in Scripture, I see a, a story that is unfolded before us of guys who have the passion inside of them and the courage to understand what it means to, to be a representation of Christ, and then we see the action before it. We see the action to act upon that courage right there, which is the boldness. And many of us are in that place right now in our lives where we're praying these courageous prayers and, and we have a courageous prayer life. Pastor Sam, don't get us wrong. Pastor Sam, I'm praying, I'm believing, and, and I'm asking the Lord to use me and all these things. But for some reason, I can't act upon it. I pray for my coworkers, I pray for my boss, I, and, and I do all these things, but I, I, I do it at home. But I've yet to step out and actually ask if I could pray for them at work. And, and, and being able to get out of that spot, being able to have that boldness is where we need to be at. Can you imagine how the rest of the Bible would be prior to, or imagine this, where the rest of the Bible will be after Jesus gets taken up, the Holy Spirit comes and empowers the, 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 the disciples and those who are in the upper room. They got empowered and all those things, and they, the Bible for the rest of it was just filled with their great prayers, but no actions and no testimonies, but just their great prayers. Imagine what that would be like to read. Now imagine what that's like if that's the lifestyle that we're living for our relationship with God. It's tough. You know, I, I, and this might be like irrelevant, but I, I see the same, you know, there's a parallel with it is, for me at my house, I see an issue, and the first thing I do when I see an issue I watch a YouTube video on how to fix it, no problem. I learn everything. I'm passionate about wanting to fix it. I go on Amazon, I buy what I need to buy, and then guess what? It sits in the box on my dining room table, and the issue is still there. But I have the solution. I just yet have acted upon fixing it. And in our lives, it's like that. We see before us a friend who is in need and who needs Jesus. We go and we do the research. We read the Bible. We speak to our Heavenly Father about how we can be used to be able to change their lives, to introduce them to who he is. And then with all the things that Jesus has already given us and we have, we put it on the dining room table. And we have yet to use it because we don't have that boldness yet. And guys, I know for many of y'all, I spoke to somebody a couple weeks ago with one of the messages because I came up to them and they were like, Pastor Sam, that message, I was really blessed by it. And these are the words that came out of their mouth. They said, it was one of those messages that was like, it just kicked me in the face. And I was like, exactly. Like some of these messages that, that have been spoken recently on the pulpit, like a 
just kick you in the face kind of thing, it's one of those wake-up calls. It's one of those things for you to just be like, man, maybe that has been me. And, and, and I'm hoping that this opens up your eyes. Why? Because there's been so many testimonies in the last few weeks, and I want to share some with you right now. You know, two weeks ago, we had a Friday service. Two weeks ago. In the Friday service, we probably had about 12 people show up, I think. Maybe. Now, give or take, we had some students who were out on vacation. We had some students go to a worship conference or a concert, and that's fine. But in total, maybe that was like eight of them or less. But in that message, on that Friday, we talked about our game plan. And y'all remember, because I told you about that game plan. And I said, you're going back to school. Are you going to lose this fire that you have currently now with God, or are you going to do something about it? Are you going to have the same thing happen to you, what happened last year, or are you going to do something about it? This past Friday, I got on the phone. I said, Julianne, she's like, what? I was like, we need more food. And she goes, what do you mean? You said 25 to 30 students. I said, I don't know, but there's 43 students here today. She goes, what? 43 students. I said, Titus brought like six by himself. And I was like, Wendy brought a friend. So-and-so brought a friend. People were just bringing friends. And she was like, all right, I got you. Pizza's on the way. I was like, thank you. We had wings and we had pizza. We had four, like 43 people there. And here's the craziest part of it all, the best part of it all. The students actually, actually, and hear me out, courageous prayers at home, boldness in public. The best thing that I saw with my own eyes was Titus's friend sitting in the back corner. And I knew, I knew, I said, Lord, am I going to have the boldness to just hear you? I hear you, Holy Spirit. Am I going to act upon it? I don't want to make it awkward for them. I really, really don't. Uh, and, and the students know we have two different services. We have a service where you bring your friends and you bring your, 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 your close friends who may not know God yet. And, and we, take it a, we take it a little bit easy on them. You know, we just let them get, get kind of, there might be, they've never been to church before. So we take it a little bit easy on them, you know. But then we have a second service for the students where we're, we're going at it and we're worshiping and we're praying and, and, and we're laying hands and praying for each other. And, and I felt the Holy Spirit say, why are you faking it? I just want them to be comfortable. I just want them, why are you faking it? So it's like, it's like if Marcus cooks a really nice A5 Wagyu steak, and he just cuts me just like a tiny piece. Like, here you go, Sam. Just try just a little bit. I, I want more, Marcus. I know, it's okay, it's sweet. Just a little bit. You're not ready for it. Just a little bit. You know how messed up that'd be? Marcus, don't do that to me. No, I'm just kidding. But do you understand what I'm saying? Because when I heard the Holy Spirit say that, automatically I, I saw the Holy Spirit showed me this image of a stone being rolled down a hill and finally moving. I said, okay, I know what you're saying. I looked at all the students at the very end, and all the students, they're here to testify. I was hesitant. I didn't know if the students would do it. I didn't know if the students would think it was awkward. But I said, VBC students, find a guest that you don't know and go pray for them right now. I thought the students would be feeling awkward, and I thought the guests would feel awkward. But you want to hear the testimony of it all? At the end of it, the guests that came learned to pray, and they prayed for our students. That's what happens when you have courageous prayers and you apply boldness to it. You, know, you want to hear something amazing about it, though? Is I look at Titus's wow. I look at Titus's life, and the journey that he's been on. And I challenged him last week. I said, Titus, look, man, I feel the Holy Spirit saying this to me to tell you, and I don't want to say it to you, but I love you, I'm going to say it. I feel the Holy Spirit saying, Titus, what are you looking backwards at? Just move forward. I remember saying that to Titus, and I remember seeing him in the classroom just give his heart out to God during worship time or whatever. And he says to me right after, Pastor Sam, next week, is it, are we inviting friends or are we doing... I said, you know what, let's invite friends. He goes, okay. And Titus' friends all come. And here's the thing. When I asked for the VBC students to pray for 
the friends, I looked in that section, I saw a whole row of VVC boys, and I said, y'all, go pray for Titus's friends. And the freedom that I saw and the boldness that I saw, Brady stands up, goes and finds someone right away, prays for them. I see, uh, I see Andy stand up, go and pray for someone right away. I see Troy stand up, go and pray for someone right away. I see Titus praying for his friend. I see, I see Tim praying for, you know, for one of the boys back there. I see just all things happening on the right side. Then the girls, they step, they're starting to pray for each other. Wendy brings a friend. I see Wendy praying for a friend. Faith brings a friend. I see Faith praying for a friend. And just all these things that are happening all right there for guests who are encountering or experiencing God like that for the first time. And the most beautiful thing of it all, I, I see Ty, I'm watching and I'm praying, and I see Titus, he looks at his friend, and I don't know if he mouthed like, do you want to try praying or do you want to pray for me or anything like that. But I saw a slight hesitation in his friend's face, and then his friend just goes, yeah. And he just prays for him in a way where I led that prayer kind of out loud of like how you can pray for people. And I don't know the words that were said, but afterwards, all I saw was like a bro fist bump, like thank you. And I was like, you can't deny what just happened in the room. And then when I shared with them about the ball or the stone rolling down the hill, and I shared it and I cast vision to the 40 students that were there, the 40 students, everybody that was there, I casted vision right there. And I said, let me share with you guys the reason why I have Friday service and what I actually want to see. And I casted that vision. I talked about the multiplication. I talked about how we can do it. And I said to them, do you think in two weeks we could see our number multiply? And everybody was like, yeah, why not? And they were confident about it. No, 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 I'm not talking about our VVC students. I'm talking about the guests. They were confident that they would bring a friend. Yeah. See what happens when we have courageous prayers but live it out boldly? You know, I preached a message back then, faithless actions equals increase. Many of us have faith. Many of us have the courageous prayers, but it's that action, that boldness that we need. Today's prayer, today's service is, are you lacking boldness? Do you need boldness in your life? My title for today is Increase My Boldness. Touch somebody next to you and be like, increase my boldness. Yeah, and here's the reason why is because there needs to be an understanding. Look, you can pretend and you can fake it and you can live a life that is stagnant in your relationship with God. But let me just reassure you something. There's not going to be growth. That's just the truth. That's just the fact of it. If there is something that you've been doing over and over and over and you've gotten the same result, why do you think if you do it one more time that there will be change? As simple as saying it like this, if I used a tool that was made for something else, but I tried to get this screw out of the wall over and over, but it's the wrong size, but I kept doing it over and over. It didn't fit the first time. It didn't fit the second time. It didn't fit the third time, but I'm going to try it the fourth time. What do you think is going to happen? Think about it with your relationship with God. I've tried this. It didn't work. I tried this. It didn't work. I tried this again, and it didn't work. Now, if everybody is okay with living a lifestyle where they don't see results, that's a different story. But that's not who I am. That's not who I've been created to be, and that's not who I think y'all have been created to be. I think that we are called to be the light of the world for a reason. I think that when Jesus left and empowered us with the Holy Spirit, he knew what he was doing. He knew. Because what do we see after that? The book of Acts is not filled with just the prayers anymore. The book of Acts is shown, and it says in Scripture, and let me read it for you one more time. It says, then, verse 8, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them. That's what it says. That's what the Bible says. I don't know why people believe that you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit, but you can. It says it in Scripture. And then the other thing that I don't understand is this, is when people see these things in Scripture, they say, ah, that was old time. So you're telling me that you believe that Jesus is only old time. Well, what about now? See, the understanding of having boldness means that if you have that passion inside of you, if you are courageous for God, and if you're willing to do anything for God, is because you have the passion inside of you, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you know what you have, but then the lack of boldness is really acting upon it is really doing something about it. 
See, that's where many of us are lacking. Hey, I, I didn't say you're lacking in your relationship with God. I said boldness. That's a different story. And many people can have a great relationship with God on their own. There's no, I, I, I said in the beginning, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's the boldness side of being that reflection of Christ in the world that what he's called us to do. Remember, there's two parts. Love God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And the second was loving our neighbors. But a lot of us are just on the first side. But today we're flipping it to where we understand the whole part of it is reflecting that relationship of Christ, showing that love of God to everybody, being able to be empowered and used by God to bless other people's lives. Why? So that they can see if God can change your life, then he can change my life. See, that's where I think that things are going to get different in our churches because I'm stirring up boldness. I'm making it aware for some people I'm lacking boldness. Pastor Sam is right. I'm lacking boldness. Guess what? I have to say the message to myself. Am I lacking boldness? I am. Can I be even more bold? Yes. Yes. Yes, I can. And the reason why I want to share that with you is because the moment that you're content with where you are, and here's how you know about your contentness, the moment that you say, you know, about, about five years ago, I prayed for someone. That used to be me. Because then if the flip side, I said, oh, cool, what about this week? Like five years ago, though, what about this week, though? Are we living out our relationship with God on a daily to where people's lives are changed on a regular basis? Right? You know, you know something that Scripture talks about? It says that, um, it, it, and I, I don't have it down, so let me paraphrase it, but it talks about once the people saw that man healed in Acts chapter 3, and they saw him leaping and jumping for joy when he walked into the, into the temple or the house of worship, it's, it talks about how many more lives were added to the kingdom based off of seeing that miracle before their eyes. Like, if only we could imagine this together is, if only we could step out in boldness for God, how many more people would be added to the kingdom? Look, I'll just be honest with you, right? There are some prayers that we prayed for our loved ones and our family members and whatever it is. But if you ask yourself, have you really stepped out in boldness to be able to act upon it and be Christ-like to them? Now that's a different story. Right? I know there's a lot of people in here like, man, I really wish that my, my dad would come to know the Lord. Like, I, I know God would do him good. And, 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 and I know that if my mom only come to, came to know the Lord, it would do her good and all these kind of things. But how come every time at home, whenever God gets brought up, it's just a battle? Instead of you showing love, it's just a battle. Now, you don't understand. What do you mean you were at church till 12 o'clock? And you don't understand. I was loving God, and it's a battle. Why would they want you to love God, and why would they want to come to love God if every time you talked about God, it was a battle? Instead of showing love, instead of praying for them, instead of showing them. You know, God really revealed that to me before my eyes whenever I said the prayer. And he was reminding me, Sam, remember when you said you wanted me to bless your business and that you wanted to be a blessing to others? I said, yeah. He goes, you're the only one getting the blessing part right now. And I was like, okay, I got you. And then that's when I started praying for like the, 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 con the people who I have contracts with in my forerunner. I started talking to them about Jesus at work. I mean, for me, on my side, look, I'm, it's not like I'm employed by them. I'm a contractor, right? It's, it's a little different because I come and go. I don't clock in hours like them. And so I don't want it to come off disrespectful, but I open myself up to them and, and I share with them. And it seems like every time somebody sits in the front seat of my forerunner, we're praying or they're crying. Grown men crying about Jesus. I never thought that I would see that. I never thought that I would be able to be in that place. What? You're a pastor. I know that. But the difference is hearing it is one thing, but acting upon it is another thing. And the disbelief that many of us have that we can't do it only stems from not ever trying. You know, it's, it's funny because I, um, I, 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 I'm watching Easton grow up and I see all these things that he's doing. And it's funny because Jeannie says all the time, like, man, 
he's just like you. And I'm like, I know. And something that was funny is, I told Jeannie about, like, before Easton was even born, I was like, honey, there's this power wheel, which is like this like little kid's car. I said, it's green, it's Toyota, it looks like my forerunner. I'm gonna buy it for him. She goes, no, you aren't. I said, why not? She goes, he's not even gonna be big enough to ride on it until he's like one years old. And I said, but I'm gonna get it anyways for when he's one years old. And she goes, why? I said, what if it sells out? What if they don't make it anymore? She goes, no, don't do it. So I didn't buy it. A couple weeks later, sold out. Months later, still never came back in stock. I was pretty upset. I was like, come on, hon. I could have bought it. It's fine. You know, it's like buying clothes right now that don't fit them. You always do it. They're like size 9 to 12. He's in preemie clothes right now. She's like, it's not the same. I was like, all right, fine. The other day, I see it in stock. I bought that thing right away. I was like, I'm buying this. I need to buy this for Easton. Like, I'm buying it. And she's not home at work. She's at work. I put the contraption together. I put it all together. Easton's looking at it. Like, he's looking at it, right? I put it all together, and I'm happy, and I see it. And I wait for Jeannie to come home. And she comes home. She looks at it. She's like, oh, my goodness. And Easton's, he's not big enough to ride in this, in this power wheel. But it's remote controlled. So he doesn't, know how, he doesn't have to know how to drive it. I drive it for him. See? But he's not old enough to sit in the car seat. But that wasn't going to stop me. So I modified the seat and I put a cushion under and I put bigger straps so that he'd stay strapped in. I wanted that for my son. I wanted him to experience that. And I put him in it and his face changed. He was like smiling like, yeah, like that. Like that's how he smiled in that photo. He's like, yeah, this is, like I don't know what he was saying, but he was just like, his laugh wasn't just like a, you know, it was like, I was like, okay, okay. And I captured it on a photo, and I started driving him around the house with it. And Twan and V were there, and Wendy was there. And he was, like, loving it. Like, he was just, he wasn't scared. Most kids, you put them in, they're like, ah, like, because it jolts. He was just, like, sitting around, just looking. Like, he really enjoyed it. And that thing goes fast. And I got that for him because I wanted him to experience that. And I modified it so that he could experience that. And I did everything that I could so that my son would be able to enjoy life like that. And God's done that for us. He's modified life for us by sending his son to down the cross so that we can enjoy life. And for some of us, we weren't even ready for it, yet he still tailored it in a way for us to be able to enjoy life and to receive forgiveness and to receive his love. Yet you weren't even ready for it, because guess what? You weren't even born yet. But long ago, it was prepped. And he had it for you. And he has it for you today. And guess what? It's so that we can enjoy what true freedom True joy, true love is like so that when we experience it, we can go and experience, we can let other people experience it. And see, for me, whenever I, I look at the scripture and, and, and I think about it, I see what Peter and John did and I see the boldness that they had to, to, com- to command healing on this man's life at the gates and he was healed of being paralyzed and then the testimony that showed only brought more people to know God. And then the boldness that they had to say, are you putting us on trial because you want to know how he was healed? Or are you putting us on trial because we did something good? Like, what is it? Because this man's life has changed. And it says in Scripture they couldn't do anything because they didn't do anything wrong. And the man's life was changed, and he was standing there, and they knew that man at the gates. See, and, and, and the very last thing is, do you have the courage to pray for boldness? And where does this stem from is actually in verse 29 down. Peter and John go back to the group that they were with, and it says, And now, O Lord, hear their threats and and give us, your servants, great boldness in preaching your word. These are the people saying that because Peter and John come back telling them the testimony of what happened. They're like, we want that. And so 30 says, stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And it says in 31, after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Do you see what happens? You see, they saw what Peter and John had. Peter and John came back and shared the testimony to them. They wanted what Peter and John had, so guess what they did? They had the courage to pray for boldness. And what happens after that? The cause of that and the effect of it in 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. 
What happens when you have the courage to pray for boldness? One, you'll step out of your comfort zone. Many of y'all who are stuck in your comfort zone, you'll finally be able to step out of it. Number two, asking God to, uh, once you pray that courageous prayer of boldness, you'll be able to ask God to finally empower you because you will finally feel qualified by God. The next thing is you'll be a reflection of Christ for others. The next one is you'll preach the word with boldness. The next one is you'll pray for miracles in Jesus' name and people will be healed. The next one is you'll set people free from spiritual bondage in Jesus' name. The next one is we will see revival break out when everyone prays this prayer. That's what happens when people have the courage to pray for boldness. See, courageous prayers is one part of it. But acting upon it is what we call boldness. Now ask yourself where you're at in your relationship with God. Are you at a place where you can pray those prayers? Because that's the first part of it. And many of us need to just get to that part now. And the second part of it is really acting upon it and having that boldness to do. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what it what it's like to be in school anymore and to see friends and to go through the things that the students are going through right now. But what they've shown me is, this is true. Because at the very end of it all, at the end of Friday service, I had a split second to sit around with Titus and his friends standing right next to uh, all the pizza. And I, and I looked at them, I was like, man, I hope you had a great time today. And they all like, kind of like nodded their head and they were talking. I said, look, man, I put a lot of... Uh, Pressure on Titus because he doesn't want to go back to his old ways. And he doesn't want to be the old Titus, and he wants to continue to push forward. And what's amazing is, because of his pushing forward in his relationship with God, all of you guys right here were blessed. Now, guess what? I said, y'all just made Titus' job easier. And I had to explain to them, because I said, now Titus isn't trying to bring all of the friends in the friend circle to God by himself. Now there's six of y'all in total. And I said, whenever y'all know that one friend is in trouble, at least two of y'all can pray for them now, since everybody knows how to pray now. And it's kind of like they all kind of nodded, like, wow, we can do that. See, now, if only we could grasp that same concept as a church. See, I opened up the message talking about wanting to see revival here at our church. I opened up the service talking about wanting to really see and wanting people to truly encounter God. I want to stand here on the pulpit when revival happens and see a line of people stretched outside because they want to come in because they are hearing that people are being healed by God. I want to see that. I, I, I made a joke, but not a joke in the leadership meeting. And we, we were talking about revival and we're talking about how revival can happen and everybody is really feeling this like, unanimous yes like we want to see revival in our church and it's going to happen and then i jokingly said what happens if revival breaks out and we don't stop but it it intersects with revival conference and i said it would be like this revival is happening and everybody from around the world is just flying to be a part of the revival that's happening here and i'm telling you at that point everything that we have at Revival Conference is going to be amplified even more. And guess what? This isn't me just talking about it. This is me believing. This is me really, truly believing that this is what God's going to do. Hey, church, we got a challenge coming up. I truly believe that it's a challenge. Because guess what? We're not trying anymore, and we're training now. And your training is, is here, is 21 days of prayer and fasting. Look, I don't know what it is that you're going to fast and pray about. I, don't, I, I can give you the guidelines of what Pastor Khan and I want us to pray about for revival and for the church, but you personally, I don't know what it is that's in your life that you may be putting before God or you may be having that if you took it away, it would remind you of God during that time. I don't know what it is. But this is what I do know, though. When you can get to a place where you will surrender something to God in order for him to fill up that void, there's an increase. And I need an increase. I need a true increase, and I know the church needs a true increase. How do, what do I feel? I feel that this 21 days of fasting and prayer is going to be the most unique, powerful one that we're going to have. I truly believe it. I truly believe that this 21 days of fasting and praying will show 
exactly the direction of what's about to happen. I believe that there are going to be testimonies that are going to stir like no other. And guess what? You can tell your friends or your coworkers or your loved ones about the conference that we're going to have. You can let them see what it's going to actually be like. And for me, in ending is this, is I'm praying that prayer. I want that boldness. Are you praying that prayer? And do you want that boldness? So let's stand to our feet. Let's bow our heads and you talk to your Heavenly Father. Pray that courageous prayer. Lord, I need your heavenly boldness in my life because I want to be used by you. I want to be a reflection of you at work. I want to be your extending hand to see people's lives get changed. Lord, I want to be used by you. So Lord, give me the boldness to step out and to act upon this courage or, or, or this courageous prayer that I'm praying right now. That even after I leave this message, even after I, I wake up tomorrow to go to work, let me be reminded that I've prayed a courageous prayer this morning. To have boldness, to be used by God, to be used by you, to be an to be extension of your hand, to be a, 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 a like, to be a version of you on this earth, Lord. To be a representation of your child so that all the world can see that your love is real. Lord, I thank you for this message. I thank you for the boldness that's about to increase in everybody's life. And I feel that just an act of faith is in this moment, just say, Lord, increase my boldness. It takes boldness to even say that. Lord, increase my boldness. Now, here's the challenge part. And this is where you lean on the Holy Spirit. In this moment right now, you ask the Holy Spirit, this week, who am I going to talk to about you? Who am I going to pray for? Who am I going to encourage or bless? Whatever it is. And whoever the Lord shows you right now, He's showing you right now. You're, getting that per you're seeing that person right now in your face. You know who that person is. It's your coworker. It's the teacher that works next door to you. It's the coworker that sits in the cubicle next to you. It's the nurse that works with you. It's, it's the person that sits in the van with you, and you travel from place to place to work on different things. You have so much time to talk to them about God this week. It's the person that you work with at your business. It's your employees. It's the student that sits right next to you. It's actually the student that you've been passing, and the Lord has been putting it on your heart to pray for them. Wait a second. It's your spouse that the Lord is revealing. It's your family. Whoever God's showing you right now, that's who you'll be praying for. That's who you'll be stepping out in boldness and being a light to. Lord, we thank you, and we ask that you help us right now, Lord. We're not trying anymore. We're training, and we're training in the giftings that you've given us. So, Lord, we want to see this come true. We want to see so-and-so encounter you this week and use us, Lord. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, I hope that you guys were blessed by the message. Do this. Go out there, have some breakfast with one another, and encourage one another. Say hi to each other. Pray for one another, whatever it is. And I cannot wait to see you guys next week. I hope you are blessed.